Welcome back guys. I have been waiting for this moment right here since January when I first ordered this engine. I can't believe it's finally here. I can't believe I get to share it with you guys. I can't even put into words how excited I am. This is an incredible piece of hardware. If you haven't been following along on this series so far, we're gonna be taking this K24, which is capable of 1200 horsepower, and we're gonna be sticking it in the back of a Ferrari 308. We're actually quite far into the project, so be sure to subscribe so you can come back and follow along with the progress. But we've been waiting on this thing the entire time. The wait is over, it's finally here. I'm excited to show you guys and give you the full rundown. And at the end of this episode, we're gonna take this thing, drop it into the car and fire it up. That's not true at all, please forgive me, I am very sorry. But we're gonna take a look at it. I'm gonna show you guys the thing top to bottom. It is incredible, check this thing out. So what we have here is the KT1000 from Four Piston Racing Engines. And to be totally transparent with everyone watching this, I wanna be upfront and say that Four Piston is not involved in this build. And anything I have to say about this engine from here on out is my own opinion. So with that said, it was a long wait to get this thing, more than seven months, which definitely dwarfs the original 14 week figure I was quoted, but I'm happy that it's here and the wait seems like it's gonna be worthwhile. I chose Four Piston due to the name that they've built in the K-Series industry, and I'm happy to think that I've got pretty much the best K-Series money can buy. Now I know I stopped the video last time once we pulled the plastic off, and I'm not trying to tease you. We will look at this thing, but with the plastic bunched around the bottom of the engine, I figured it's not worth showing quite yet. So I went out and bought an engine stand, this one with a 1,250 pound capacity, which suggests that it should be able to hold up my buddy Byron's mom if it needs to. Hold on, I'm sorry. I'm just kidding, Byron. It won't hold her up. In all seriousness, I needed a place to support this engine so that we can dress it and get the rest of it figured out before it goes into the car. I bought the only engine stand I could find locally and if you're looking for one, this one's fine, although I will say that the holes for the wheels were poorly drilled and had a bunch of slag on the backside, and it made assembly a big pain. But any four-wheel engine stand should do the trick. Just avoid a three-wheeled one if you can. And beyond any of that, if your engine stand doesn't match your car, what are you even doing with your life? Get it together, come on. With the engine stand built, I wheeled over the hoist, and got the engine hooked up, this time using chains, which I know quite a few of you guys will be happy to see. I wrapped the chains in microfibers so that they wouldn't damage the valve covers anodizing, and I lifted it on up. Due to the fact that Honda uses M12 by 125 bolts to hold the transmission to the block, I had to run across town to grab bolts before I could attach the engine stand to it. But before long, I had the whole thing in place and ready to mate to the stand itself, which just needs a bit of a thrust. With everything locked into place, we can finally set this thing down and get a good look at it. That's a lot better. It's nice to finally get to see this thing without plastic wrapped around it or in a crate. And it's beautiful, obviously, with its red anodized valve cover and its vapor honed cylinder head and block. Now for the Honda guys out there, this began life as a K24A4 block, and it's been given the full KT1000 turbo endurance engine treatment. This is an iron sleeved block that has been O-ringed, and within those sleeves are Wiseco HD flat top pistons, with tool steel wrist pins. Those wrist pins are connected to Sane's Performance Series I-beam rods. Up top, we've got Four Pistons Pro TSX CNC machine cylinder head, which I opted for in contrast to a K20 head based on Four Pistons' suggestion. They've seen incredible numbers out of this head and recommended it over the K20 head, and thus I went with it. Obviously, it's got beautifully machined intake and exhaust ports, but where the real beauty lies is underneath the red valve cover. I know it goes against everything Honda, but I opted to delete the VTEC system in this engine because it's unnecessarily complicated and doesn't really stand to benefit the engine that I'm looking to build. In its place, we've got a VTEC killer setup which includes Four Pistons' beautiful purple anodized roller rocker setup, 
and the head itself is equipped with Ferreya Super Alloy Plus valves, valve springs, retainers, and locks. As a whole, this engine should carry us all the way to 1,000 horsepower at the wheels, and this thing is built to withstand 1,200. All right, stop. You, typing the comment. I see it, written out. 1,000 horsepower, that's stupid. This can't handle that. That's a waste. That's totally dumb. You don't have to finish the comment. I see you. I hear you. You're not even wrong. Let's talk power for a quick second. I have said 1,200 horsepower, I've said 1,000 horsepower, I've said a bunch of different numbers, and that's all they are. This engine is built to handle 1,200 horsepower, and I'd like to see 1,000 horsepower at the wheels for a fun street setup. I know that that power level is completely stupid, it's completely obnoxious, it doesn't actually serve any purpose, but if you don't see how that's fun, I kind of feel bad for you, you're missing out. You're missing part of the point of cars here, they're supposed to be fun. If this engine can make a thousand horsepower, why would we not? It's gonna be sick. However, the real purpose of this car and the other turbo setup that we have is to make about 600 horsepower, and that's gonna be a perfect, usable, drivable amount of power that will make for an incredibly fast car that is reliable, fun to drive, and not totally stupid. We can do more than one thing here. We have modern fuel injection and ECU tuning and standalone systems. We can swap out turbos. This isn't hard, this isn't complicated stuff. So, it's gonna be fine, I promise. Dude, it's fine, don't worry about it. Another aspect to this engine is the dry sump system, which I sourced from Daily Engineering. And I wanna be clear, this isn't really necessary for an engine at this power level. We went with dry sump because otherwise it simply wouldn't fit into the car. We needed the change in overall height in order for this engine to clear the chassis. The dry sump system itself is pretty neat though in that the pump is integrated into the oil pan. So we can actually flip this thing over and take a closer look at how it works. Unlike a traditional dry sump system that has lines and fittings coming out of the bottom of the pan, this one has all of its channels for the sump pickups machined into the pan itself. This makes for a serious decrease in the required plumbing and a much simpler system overall. All right, I'm gonna take a quick minute to explain why I'm choosing this engine. Plenty of you guys already know why, or you just don't care, so skip ahead if you want to, but I know there's a lot of new people watching this video, and you're gonna be curious. Why would you pull the V8, the heart, out of a Ferrari and put in a Honda four banger? And that's a really fair question. I don't blame you at all, but I'm gonna remind you. The engine that we pulled out of the Ferrari weighed 850 pounds with all of its accessories and it dynoed at 163 horsepower to the rear wheels. Now, that translates perfectly to the 202 crank horsepower rating that Ferrari gave it. It was in really good health, but in a car that weighs 3,200 pounds, it was not fast by pretty much any measure. It's considerably slower than my buddy John's 308 GTB carbureted car that makes 40 or so more horsepower. The CIS injected motor on this thing is just sleepy, and it's not the best platform to try to turn into some horsepower monster. Now, the F106 engine is a good one. It's basically the predecessor to the F40 engine. It's what the F40 and the 360 are both based off of, and plenty of other Ferrari V8s. It is a good motor, but in order to make this kind of power, you'd have to spend a fortune to do it, and reliability begins to go out the window. It's not to say they aren't good, but it's not the right tool for the job for what we wanna do here. I sold the engine out of this car for $12,000, but you can buy a 1,000 horsepower Honda Crate engine for less than 10. You can do the math. This starts to make a lot more sense. This engine is going to make a lot more power than the Ferrari motor realistically ever could, and it's gonna do so a lot more reliably. It's gonna do so a lot more affordably as well. Now, it doesn't mean that we're cheaping out. This is a really good motor, and we're pairing it with the best parts that we possibly can. We're trying to build a really good car here. But it's also important to keep in mind that I want a car that I can hop in and drive on the street or on the track anytime I want. I want it to be bulletproof, I want it to be reliable, and I want it to be fast as hell. Now it would be really hard to choose an engine that could do all of those things better than this Honda engine could. It's the correct layout, it's a transverse engine. We can pair it with a really good transmission that can handle the power and can be air shifted, paddle shifted, all these types of things. This engine has a huge aftermarket and it has had a ton of R&D poured into it. Millions of cars have come with these engines in them and hundreds of them are raced on any given weekend. 
We're not having to figure out anything for ourselves. We're not venturing into no man's land or into the weird voodoo weeds of high horsepower vintage Ferraris. Instead, we're doing something that simply makes a bunch of sense. And with that in mind, and I'll challenge any viewer out there, leave me a comment and tell me an engine that you genuinely think makes more logical and justifiable sense to put into this car. Sure, we could do an LS4 or something like that, but with a huge weight trade-off. We could do something like a VR6, but reliability might go out the window. I think for what we're trying to do with this car, the K24 is quite literally the perfect platform. And for those of you worried about how this thing's gonna sound or that the heart and soul of the Ferrari was that V8 flat plane crank, just wait till you hear it, okay? I promise it won't let you down. Now, yeah, that's a lot of talking, but you didn't think that I was gonna end this episode without seeing what the carbon fiber intake plenum looks like on this beautiful motor, did you? No chance, come on. It's a given that this manifold is gorgeous, but I'm genuinely excited to see it on the engine because it's gonna be on a different level. I guess it's no surprise that it looks killer, but I might have also taken the time to mount up the manifold and the turbo as well. I couldn't help but want to see this thing relatively assembled as it's going to be in the car, and needless to say, it looks unreal. I do wish the manifold was a bit more polished in its overall welding execution, but I'm still happy with it for my first time welding stainless, and overall I'm really excited to see this whole setup installed in the car. I think it's going to be a pretty good centerpiece. All right, I'm cutting this episode off here, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. This was a pretty fun, in-depth look at the motor, but trust me, I am eager to put this thing in the car. I've got a little bit more fabrication to do before we drop it back into place, but good news is that the transmission showed up while I was filming this outro, so we are in business. We've got another episode coming up. Tuesday is gonna be a good one. Lots of fabrication over the weekend, so don't forget to subscribe. Don't miss any episodes. It helps me out a bunch if you do. Leave me a like, leave me a comment, blah, blah, blah. You get it? I'll catch you guys on Tuesday. Thanks as always.